Hello. Welcome to uh, episode four of season three of the Stoic Poetry Podcast. My name is Kurt, and uh, cheers to you. I haven't had much of this cider since uh, last Thursday, because I, or last whenever it was, because I got so drunk. I had been just, oh God, I didn't want any more, but I'm going to have some tonight to uh, get back off the wagon. Anyway, I'm doing this podcast late this week because um, of reasons, factors, circumstances. There's a lot going on right now as I close in on the end of my tenure here in the United States. So many things going on. So let's jump right into it, shall we? I've got some things to cover, and I promise I'll do this again uh, next Thursday. So it'll be short and cut, short and fast, Sunday night to, to Thursday. I've got just four stones to cover tonight. The first, let's uh, talk about the uh, Gaijin Twitter uh, podcast collective, our little community on X. Um, we have uh, a new member, um, Japan, I think, I think it's Japan Training, I think is the name, um, invited by uh, Kevin um, O'Shea into our group, and we're, we're glad to have you making a podcast about Japan, about trains in Japan. And I haven't finished the episode or the interview that you did, uh, Kevin, um, and uh, the two of you, but I'm really enjoying it, and I plan to finish it this, this week, maybe tomorrow. Welcome to the group. Um, we we'll continue to have our uh, th- Tuesday, now it's moved to Thursday meetings on X, on the X platform. Um, uh, for, my, for me, it's 4.30 in the morning, and it's in the evening over there on, in Japan. Uh, and it works out cool, quite nice, because I'm an early riser. Enjoying that. The group seems to have legs. We're quite active on the X platform and our little communications group. We do have the Discord server, not as much, much activity going on there, but there are some. First rock complete. Second rock, I want to talk about um, uh, the state of the move. Um, lots going on right now. Um, first, like I said earlier, I'm down to uh, just eight weeks now um, before I go, before I'm done with my work. And last week I was feeling pretty anxious about it all. Just wasn't feeling like I was ready. Not that I'm ready, not ready to go, but not ready, ready, like like having my everything together and prepared. Um, I've kind of got things in place now. I reached out to the pet shipper, made some decisions about that. Um, I, I'm long over on the work thing. It's not an issue anymore. You know, the lack of it. I've, I've pretty much, I'm pretty much my job is done. You know, I'm just there for anything that they need me to tidy up, clean up things um, between now and the end. And especially um, after watching since last week, since uh, my coworker David retired uh, last week on uh, Wednesday was his last day. And then he was in charge of the big change control event, which was hard to imagine us, imagine our organization doing the weekly change control, the IT change control event without David as the ringleader. It's like imagining uh, Smokey and the Bandit movie without Burt Reynolds. Well, we had our meeting on our first meeting without him on Wednesday, and uh, uh, another coworker filled in and did it. And it was a little rocky, but we got it done. It worked off just worked just off just fine. That made me realize that um, I'm not needed, and nothing but indis- I'm nothing but dispensable at work. And uh, the fact that um, they'll be just fine without me, I'll be I'll be forgotten. And hardly hardly missed so that's good i'll let that go in other news on the move front um we're making fast action on a potential house purchase the machia house in shimizu it turns out to have been a winner there's only only one thing that's going to stop us from buying it and that's a house inspection um and it will have it'll have to be a colossally terrible house inspection you know, it'll be, I'll have to say the inspector will have to come out and say, you know, we need to cordon this thing off and no one get inside there. Well, I don't, not that extreme. Basically, they're going to have to say it's, an, it's, it's, it's about to fall in on itself um, before we'll probably say no. I was talking to my wife last night who grew up in an old house like this, and I was asking her how she felt about moving in a house that was of old earthquake standards, especially given that the big one, the big earthquake is due for the uh, that area. And she's like, I grew up in a place like that, you know, and I'm she's okay with the risk I'm okay with the risk for slightly different reasons uh, because our our life responsibilities are complete for the most part sure we might have you know adult parental and grandparental maybe someday responsibilities but those are secondary to our primary responsibility raising our daughter 
So I can take a little more risk. Be a little more of these and these things. But but I, the house looks great. These the cursory look we gave it the, uh, two days ago were we were really impressed with the inside. Well taken care of. A well loved house. Beautiful architecture. Sure, it's got some challenges. I mean, it looked practically move, ready to move in. Um, and uh, we're very pleased with it. It strikes us. It hits on everything, even even the garden, because we can just demolish the house in back. It's got a, a second structure in back, which would leave us with a very nice yard in the back. The um, Tomorrow, the uh, demolish, demolition guy is going to come by and give us to do an estimate on how it would take to demolish the house in back. And then uh, if we, once we have that estimate, we're going to probably then make an offer. I've already uh, got the money in route to Yumiko for the, we have to give a 10% deposit uh, upon the time that we, uh, if our offer is accepted, which I think it will be because we're going to make a full price offer. And the owner is already aware of our interest and uh, communicating uh, from the, to, to the realtor on behalf. You might find this interesting, but we're using one realtor for, for both which is not uncommon in Japan. So it's one agency. Um, the realtor that we've been using, um, he's been helping us all along, uh, happens to work for the same company that's selling the house. It's another agent within that company, which facilitates things. I know it sounds like a conflict of interest. We wouldn't do that here in the States. We'd each have a separate realtor from a separate agency. But in Japan, this is actually not uncommon and actually has its benefits in facilitating speed. And, uh, and that's what's exactly what's happening. They're, everybody's everybody's eager to see this go through, and everybody's being um, quick coming forward. Hmm. More to come about that later. I'll show more details about that. Some of the communication that I'm getting from the we're getting from the owner. Um, that's very interesting. I hope this works out. I hope this is the house. If it does work out, we could own this place before have it outright free and clear, uh, paid for, our home by the time we get by the time I arrive in uh, December. If, it, if this goes the way I think it's, if, you know, everything's moving fa fast for Japan standards. Japan usually moves slow. So that's the state of the house, the state of the move, the state of my, oh, I got one more thing. I got my new iPhone, which I just finished setting up. Look at that. Isn't that a great, uh, this is my Softy Papa 2.0 phone, which I spent half the day today setting up. It's an iPhone uh, 16 uh, Pro Max, one terabyte of storage, enough storage on there to last the rest of my life with uh, backup, um, not backup to the um, Microsoft Cloud by a one, one drive. Um, and I've got it all curated with the apps. I spent, I spent, a, I got it on Friday and it's Sunday. I didn't even open the box till this morning because I spent time yesterday and Friday working on deciding what apps I wanted to have on this thing. Because I don't want to have uh, the clutter that I've got on my current phone, which I'm, is recording right now. I wanted to have a an, an application. I wanted to have a phone that was set up, a very yeah, a mature phone, so to speak. A phone that reflects my experience as a content creator, um, my interests and my lack thereof. My current phone is chock full of, you know, it's like a scattershot shotgun blast of interest. It's got so many apps of everything I've ever discovered and this phone though it has an infinite amount of space seemingly it's just got a very small number of curated apps um and it's not even connected up to a sim card yet it's just i'm just using it off of the wi-fi and i won't until i get to japan and that i've done it this way because i want to have a very focused tool focused laser focused on the uh, effort of content creation of curating my um, presence on the internet as softy papa uh, and a very effective tool to that end. Not a cluttered scattershot of apps for whatever and everything. So there we go though. Red, the move readiness. Oh, the dog's ready. He's ready to go. The dog's ready to go. The move, I'm ready to go. Jobs. Man, jobs, job. <laughs> um, oh, the certificate of, uh, of eligible, of, um, cert certificate of um, auth authorization, whatever it's called from Japan, COA, is on its way. Uh, should be here probably tomorrow or the next day. I have all the paperwork here, then I'll get all that off to the consulate here in Los Angeles, and I'll get my um, entry visa, my entry permit for Japan. The house is underway. Um, all that stuff, the work, the move is well underway, well in hand. It's, still, it's complete. Okay, now comes to the, the stone right here. 
a retirement stone. Um, I want to talk about that. I've got some thoughts. Hold on, let me have a sip. I'm not going to get drunk like last week. It was fun, but it's not for me. I'm not retired yet, but I'm experiencing something that I think is anticipatory of what being retired will be like. Maybe it won't last. Maybe it's just a, a ephemeral thing in the, in the moment of now, given the strange way, circumstance of my, the way I'm retiring, everything going down at once, meaning my daughter graduating from university and off she goes to start her own life. Responsibility is complete. The huge financial draw that that was is over. The uh, liberation that comes and the sense of satisfaction that comes of having done my duty as a father, the, the, the duty that I wanted to do, the duty that I undertook to do to raise my daughter, feels good. Add to that the fact that if not, I'm, if not retired in fact, I am retired in function, Nobody needs me at work anymore. Meetings are not stressful anymore. I attend meetings and meet things, action items don't come my way. Nobody asks me to do anything. I'm not going to be around long enough. Nobody even really mind, notices me there anymore. You know, at first I th thought that, you know, maybe I would be needed. I realize now I'm not needed. I'm just, I'm just waiting off the clock. And I could have, I could have set my retirement date for the, for the September. And it would have been to the same effect. So there's the fact that the work stuff is gone and liberated. The pressure, the supreme pressure for 40 years of being the, the primary breadwinner is past. Plus, there's this sense that comes of being 60. The sense of having been there, done those things. All that, all that is related to growing old, getting, if I can use the word mature, certainly uh, looking back at just anyone uh, 10 years back or 20 years back or 30 years, oh, heaven forbid, they have so much yet to experience and go through. And I know it sounds um, patronizing. And it's part of the reason why old people don't talk about it a lot, because you just have to get through it. But there is something good about being seasoned and old and still healthy having your children or child grown and gone and your work complete. Add to that the deep, deep satisfaction of having my life's work complete in the form of my book, Going Alone. All done. Every single word in that book is exactly where it needs to be. Not a, not a word needs to change, nothing. But I can go on writing for the rest of my life and it's just... It's just, it's like, it's like when a runner, I've talked about this before, goes through the finish line and they lift up their arms and oh, they keep on running for a, a little bit, right? But the race is over. The, the victory of completion is done. That's what it feels like. And finally, most significantly, I would say, is the peaceful satisfaction that comes of having developed a for lack of a better term, creed, by which I can rest my hat and live my life with the days that remain. Deep, deep satisfaction in that too. It's not all gravy. I still have my challenges. They're not a lot though. I mean, really, not a lot anymore. It's mostly just whatever comes my way is just kind of peacefully addressed. I like to think that I can handle disease and death at this point, well, excuse me, <sighs> I guess I'll have to wait to see, right? <sighs> so this is what I want to talk about with all that preamble, with this season now of the great transition, the end of all of this responsibility for daughter and career and supporting a family and trying to fulfill a life purpose and to develop values to live by and to sustain myself with all of that being done all at once 
is exactly, without the cigarette, like the feeling that you get after sex. That kind of euphoric peace, almost a sleepiness, just feels so good. You can just lay back and drift off, is how it feels now in this season. But <coughs> just a second let the, the, the dog do his thing. It sounds like a tractor out there moving around in the dark. What do you think that is, Rudy? That's how life is now. It's not all peaceful evenings by the fire. There's interruptions that occur, segues that transpire, and things that happen out of turn, or seemingly out of turn. And at this point in life, I just take all these things in their stride, in my stride. And little can ambush me anymore. If it's something that's annoying, I just, close my mouth and, you know, focus my attention somewhere, somewhere pleasant and let it pass. So true on social media, you know, the comments that come that are always get under your skin or used to get under my skin. Don't do so much anymore. I make it a habit of trying to respond to just about every comment and a good comment of thank you for sharing your thoughts and a little smiley face suffices for even the most annoying comment. And it really doesn't get under my skin anymore. Because it's all reflection and projection. People are telling me about themselves when they're telling me about what they think of me. For the most part. There may be something in there that I should listen to, and I will. But for the most part, I just hear what sounds like the important part and let the rest pass on. Or just wait it out for a second like the tractor and let the dog growl and do his thing. Now, I don't know that this is going to last very long. Of course, soon, very soon, I'm going to be struck with either quick death or disease and, uh, you know, beginning to have the debilitation of my body and my mind. I can already see it happen. My body is already going down pretty fast. My mind is not as it used to be. I'm okay with both of those things. It's as okay as you can be. I truly do think I am okay with these things. It's part of the cycle of things. It's just the way it goes, and I'm ready for death. But will this subtle euphoria, this feeling that it's, I'm feeling right now, as the whole apparatus of my responsibility kind of is taken down around me. The whole thing that constrained me, the chains that, that the chains of work, the responsibilities of family, the need of fulfillment of some personal sort by having a, something to do, something to say, and having gotten that out, it's done. Will this sense of completeness last? Or will it be replaced by some other maybe want and need, some other distraction? My 
guess is that it won't. I think the old get to a point where we get beyond those things for the most part. It's part of the reason why, although the poem says, you know, they will rail against that good night, do not go quietly into the good night. I don't know. I don't think so. I think there's something to be said for going quietly into the night. Especially if you don't have anything more to rail against. Railing is sometimes for the young and those that have something yet to complete. But those of us that have finished our work, finished our, fulfilled our duty, met our expectation, met, met the expectations that we put upon ourselves and that we took upon ourselves, can be at peace. You know, we don't have to rail. We don't, we can go quietly into that good night. So if that's the case, and if I'm one of them who can enjoy the satisfaction of being done, then wow, what a season of life this is. <laughs> what a time to be alive. So I'll finish the stone with one parting shot. Um, and I have one more stone to do. Um, the parting shot is, if you're not in that state, and I have not been in this state all of my life. I'm 60 now. And it wasn't up until like six months ago that this really began. Um, when my daughter graduated, my family went to Japan, and uh, my sense of work responsibility became complete. And I began to, you know, realize that I was free. Free of burdens and responsibilities that I had chosen for myself. I chose to be a husband. I chose to be a father. I chose to be a breadwinner, an employee, etc. Just now that I've, I've reached the end of that. And it feels good. But I want to say this. If you're in the midst of all of that, if you're a younger person, and this is not me sound like, I hope I'm not sounding like some old guy saying, you young people listen to me, but why not? <laughs> i got something to say that might be useful. If you're younger and you're in the midst of it all, you've still got the young kid, you've still got the mortgage to pay, you've got the job to do, the taxes to pay, et cetera, et cetera. Just know that if you can maybe get to the other side, there might be a piece like this waiting for you. There's a lot of people like this, a lot of older people that seem to be all right with being old. I don't know why they don't talk about it. Maybe it's because most people don't talk about life. Or maybe it's because it's maybe cruel to talk about how wonderful this is with those that are still in the fray. I don't know. But I'll talk about it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> and I would just like to encourage you to, when it's really tough, Keep pushing at it. Do prepare. Do prepare for being old, though. Don't let this sneak, this age sneak up on you unexpected. Be prepared so that you can have your freedom to take this little stone and put it aside. Last stone here. It's for uh, Ricky's question for us this week. Ricky over uh, Paprika Girl underscore GP over on the uh, Gaijin Twitter Podcast Collective. She always gives us a uh, uh, question for the, for the week and the question for this week was um, a very simple one what do you have on the back burner that you want to finish by the end of the year simple one I said huh well for me it's basically to bring all this to a close not just America but this whole serious adulting thing to a close it doesn't mean that in retirement that I won't be an adult but I'll be a different type of adult like today for example one of the neighbors saw me walking and their second grade uh, son asked his mom if he could come out and join me so the mom uh, texted me we're all I'm part of the text group here I feel, I feel like a logo she, she said you know my son saw you walk past and he wanted to come walk with you. Can you come? Because I walk a course, right? So they saw me. I said, you bet. I'm going to be coming around again. Let's, I'll meet him outside. So I met him outside and we went for a walk, several, several laps around the property. And I had the most delightful time. We just goofed around and said silly things and funny things. Because I don't feel 
like I did before when I was a father, so to speak, of a young child, and when I was a teacher of children, like I had to be serious and I had to be making good use of time. I just wanted to hear, just want to make the kid laugh, just have fun to talk and to twist the brain a little bit, to, to indulge in humor and irony and all that kind of stuff. And so we just talked, we literally talked for, we walked for half an hour together and we just talked about the silliest things. And we had a, a blast, both of us. That's how all of life is now. The serious stuff is kind of gone. It's over. And so, Ricky, to answer your question then, I need to bring all of this to an end. And I need to, by the end of the year, extric extricate myself from this serious life, from this serious circumstance, from this serious paradigm, and begin the new life of being older and free and at peace. That's it for this film. And that's it for this night. Thanks uh, for sitting with me for a little by the fire. I'll be back on Thursday. I'll go get a, I'll go refill my jug. Come back and we'll talk some more. Until then, I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too safe.